I wanted to install the new version of Libre Elec in VirtualBox. Yes, my plan is to run it on my home theater PC, well, actually upgrade it on my home theater PC, but I wanted to see how it goes, as any problems I might encounter on my home theater PC downstairs will require me to run around the house to try and sort the problems out. And I'm a techie and I don't wish to run anywhere. So my alternative is to use VirtualBox. I can look at two screens at once and yeah, it would just be so much easier. However, LibreElec only provides an IMG file for the installer. They don't provide an ISO file, which VirtualBox would be able to read. But there is an alternative, and I'll show you what you can do in this video. So in the case of LibreElec, on the downloads page, you can go to direct downloads and grab the AMD slash Intel slash NVIDIA version. And yes, that would be the version I want there, with the IMG.gz file. I've extracted a copy of the IMG file out of the GZ file and left it in my downloads folder. I'm not going to cover that part of the tutorial, but let's go from here to what we have to do with VirtualBox. So first off, you have to open the console, terminal, whatever you would like to call it, and type in VBox manage, convert from raw, all one word, the IMG file, and then an output file with a .vdi extension. That's it, press enter. So converting raw image file .img to vdi. And that's generated a vdi file, which is about half the size of the img file. Now go across to VirtualBox. So this is VirtualBox version six. I'll create a new operating system. Just name it wherever you want. Sometimes VirtualBox recognizes what it is. Sometimes it doesn't. What's LibreElect going to be? Do you know what? I don't even know what it's based on. Probably can't go too far wrong with Debian or Ubuntu though. Next, uh, just you know, set these preferences to whatever you need for the particular system you're looking at. I'll give it eight gig of RAM. My home theater PC has about that much. And I'll create a new virtual hard drive now. Yes, I require a virtual hard drive. We'll dynamically allocate, yeah. Again, set whatever sizes you need for the particular operating system you're looking at. And now I'll go to the settings of it. Uh, don't mind me while I give it a few more items that are necessary for it, but it's just my particular system. You may or may not need to do these things. The graphics controller hmm, varies on the operating system. For LibreLec, I believe you have to use this VMS VGA or VBOX VGA. It won't boot up in the SVGA resolution. Need 3D acceleration. Now we come across to the storage. We're looking at the SATA controller. We need to add a hard drive. I choose an existing disk. Go to add it across my downloads folder. Select the VDI which I've just created, the LibreElec.VDI. Open that, choose it, and other than changing the network, that's about all I need to do now. Oh, and the USB, that'll do it. So start this up. Oh, no boot medium found, I did not get there in time. Yes, reset that. F12, I need to choose a different hard drive. I'm gonna choose hard drive two. This will be LibreElec as if it's installed on a USB flash drive. So this is the actual installer. So yeah, I can install LibreElec. Select hard drive. SDA is the hard drive which I created. That is 40 gig. Yes, that is correct. Okay. Hard drive will be wiped out. Yeah, that's fine. Yes, go on with it. Uh, get some errors there, but um, well, anyway, it seems to boot, so I'll just ignore that. May remove the installation media and reboot. <laughs> yeah, can't remove the installation media just like this anyway, but uh, let's go and uh, we'll close that. No, too late. I think this is booting up from the first hard drive. Yes, it is. So the install has succeeded. Now what you're gonna notice here, the resolution is appalling. Now I've not been able to resolve this one. If you enable SSH and then set a password, I'll go next, uh, yeah, next, just get on with it. So if you insert the guest edition CD image, 
then I'll let SSH across to the system. Uh, yes, that's fine. Uh, the password which I just set. Now I do cd forward slash media forward slash whatever it's called, uh, vbox guest editions. vbox guest editions, ls, we'll get the name of the file, which is the, uh, the Linux guest editions, vbox Linux editions run. Dot slash vbox Linux editions dot run. Permission denied. Ah, oh, yes, we need sudo. Don't know why we need sudo. I think I'm already root. There is no work in sudo. No, you're right there. Why would I need sudo? Um, it would be something like sh or bash. And I get a weird error message here that I've got an error in the MD5 checksums. <laughs> so, yeah, at this point, I can't install the guest editions from the ISO file. And you can't install the guest editions from the package manager. Due to the simple fact, uh, the package manager doesn't exist. So that is about as far as I can go of getting this system working in VirtualBox. It does seem to function. We've got this weird odyssey with a mouse. Uh, that can be fixed by going to input, unticking the mouse integration. You can make the screen a bit bigger because we're stuck at that small size. You can scale it to 150%. Um, so there we are, just have one mouse. Press control to get the mouse out of there. Yeah, so that's about as far as I can get it. Is it as working as I wanted it to be? Um, not exactly, because I can't seem to work out how you create a, an SSH file system in this, or link to an SSH file system. This used to be under protocol. Can't see it now. Anyway, that's how you get an operating system with an IMG file installed and working in a virtual box. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later.